Dear classmates, welcome back to the Beast Part Two Chapter. So far, we already introduced Test Pen Generator (TPG) and the Output Response Analyzer (OIA). In this video, we are going to introduce Beast Architecture. We are going to explain how we put together TPG, OIA. With our CUT. In this video, we will introduce two important BIST architecture. One is test per clock. The other one is test per scan architecture. Overall speaking, BIST architecture can be classified in many different ways. One way is to classify BIST according to the hardware. We can have separate beast and embedded beast. For separate beast, TPG and OIA are outside of the CUT; they are external. For embedded beast, we can reuse CUT's free flop or ledge as TPG and OIA. Another way to classify beast. Is by their clocking scheme. We can have test per clock architecture and a test per scan architecture. For test per clock architecture, we apply one test for every clock cycle. For test per scan architecture, we apply one test in between scan in and the scan out operation. We now start from test per clock architecture. For combinational CUT, we can use LFSR as our TPG and use one miser as our OIA. This is a very simple separate based architecture because the CUT and the TPG they are separate. This is a test per clock architecture. At each clock, we can apply one test pattern, and we observe the test output. This is good for combinational CUT, but for sequential CUT, there are flip flops inside the CUT. So, how are we going to deal with sequential CUT? For sequential CUT, the billboard architecture has been proposed by Dr. Kuhnemann in 1979. The full name of billboard is Built-in Logic Block Observer. The billboard can serve both as TPG and ORA. In this picture, the yellow blocks. Are the combinational logic, and the blue blocks are the billboard register. When we want to test combinational block C1, billboard one is configured as a TPG, and the billboard two is configured as ORA, so that we can test the combinational logic C1. When we want to test combinational block C2, we will configure billboard two as TPG and the billboard three as ORA, so that we can test combinational block C2. In the same way, when we want to test combinational block C3, we can configure billboard three as TPG. And、uh, billboard one as ORA. In this way, we can test all the combinational blocks in the CUT. This is an embedded BISP because we reuse the CUT's flip-flop as the billboard register. This slide shows the structure of the billboard register. 
it has two control signals B1 and B2. By controlling the values of B1 and B2, we can support four modes of operation. One is a simple shift register or scan chain. The other one is normal operation. They are just like regular free flop. A third operation is a miser that can serve as ORA. A fourth operation is LFSR that can serve as TPG. When B1 is 1, B2 is 0, we can have these values. So the data is coming in from the combinational logic and is captured by the free flop. This is just like a regular free flop except that we have two gate delay. When B1 is 0 and B2 is 0, the NAND gate output is tied to 1. And we select the scan input. So this is just like a scan champ. The data is coming in from SI scan input pin and it is shifted out to the SO shift out pin. When B1 is 0 and B2 is 1, at this time We select the feedback input and uh, this is configured as an LVSR that generate pattern to the external logic. This will serve as a test pattern generator. This is a type 1 LVSR because the feedback exclusive OR gate are outside of the shift register. Finally, when B1 is 1 and B2 is also 1, at this time, the external output is coming in from the data input. Also, we select the feedback. So this is configured as a miser, which serves as an ORA. In summary, the billboard is a good architecture. It supports speed testing. We can apply one test for each clock. However, the billboard register is much larger in area and it has performance degradation. Unfortunately, billboard is not really useful in practice due to the area and the performance overhead. Now it's time for you to do a practice. We said that billboard is a test per clock architecture. So billboard belongs to separate bits or embedded bits architecture. Please think about it. Have you got it? Yes, it belongs to the embedded bits architecture because we reuse the CUT's prefab as billboard register. 
Now we move on to the second architecture, test per scan architecture, which was proposed by IBM in 1982. This is a very simple test per scan architecture for a single scan chain CUT. We have LVSR that serve as the TPG and it generate patterns for combinational logic. We have MISER that serve as ORA that collect the test response from the combinational logic. For the scan chain, we have one LFSR that generate input and the one LFSR that serve as the ORA. This is a pretty simple architecture. It is a separate piece architecture because the TPG LFSR and the internal free flop are separated. However, there is only one small problem about this architecture. It is not a scalable architecture. In practice, we have many, many scan chains. So how are we going to deal with COT with many scan chains? In 1982, Dr. Badel and McHaney proposed the stump architecture. The full name of stumps is self-test using a miser and a parallel shift register. In the stump architecture, we use one LVSR that feed many scan chains. This is a test per scan architecture because every time we need to load the scan chain after that, we can apply a test. And then we need to shift out all the contents to the miser. So this is a test per scan architecture. It is a separate base architecture because the TPG and ORA are separated from the CUT's internal free flop. Stump architecture it's a very good architecture because the area is very small. It is a very good architecture for CUT with many scan chains. Stump is a very popular architecture that is actually used by many beast architecture nowadays. Now we have a small quiz for you. Suppose in the CUT we have 50 scan chains. Each scan chain has 100 bit of free flops. So we want to know how many total bits of LFSR do we need. Please consider two architecture. Architecture number one. If we use one LFSR for each scan chain, Suppose that each LVSR has 25 bits. What would be the total number of LVSR overhead? Architecture 2. What if we use the stump architecture? What is the total number of LVSR overhead? Please do the calculation. Are you done yet? For question number one, there are 25 bits of VSR by 50 scan chain. So we would need 1250 bits of free flop for LVSR. This is a large area overhead. For the stump architecture, we only need 50 bits of LVSR. By comparison, we save a lot of area using the stump architecture. In summary, the stump architecture is very good because the area overhead is small and the control is very easy. However, the test per scan architecture 
potentially requires longer test time than the test per clock architecture. And what is worse, the stump architecture could potentially have a structural dependency problem. So we need a phase shifter to fix this problem. Please see our next video. In summary, in this video, we introduce two important base architecture. The test per clock architecture applies one test for each clock. Bilbo is one famous example of test per clock architecture. Unfortunately, it is not very useful in practice due to large area and the performance overhead. The test per scan architecture apply one test for each scan. The stump architecture is one famous example of test per scan architecture. Due to its simplicity, it is still very useful in today's best architecture. Thank you for watching.